Lord be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Our worship service this morning is Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184. We stand to sing our opening hymn, 347. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, 
I, a poor, miserable sinner, <clears throat> confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, <clears throat> and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Advent is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia. Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. This is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of our Lord. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father. We welcome you this morning to Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church. We welcome our visitors and guests. Please be reminded to fill out the fellowship pads on the end of your pews and pass them in early. It's how we get to know who's worshiping with us. It helps us keep records. We greatly appreciate that you do it. Uh, only announcement today is that uh, we had the kids' Christmas program at 4 o'clock, followed by a potluck dinner. And uh, because of that, uh, we will not have, well, it's, the confirmants know that on their schedule that they don't have confirmation class but the bulletin says that there is, but uh, go by the schedule that I sent out. We will not have confirmation class uh, tonight um, as the kids are expected to be at the Christmas program uh, and participating with, uh, with all the youth. Uh, so that is it for announcements. So we will continue with the hymn of the day, 357. <laughs>
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Hear this short sentence from the Gospel reading again, when John the Baptist answered the priests and Levites from Jerusalem, saying, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. So far the word of the Lord. <clears throat> There may perhaps be some people who are not really interested in what the readings and theme will be week after week or throughout a season of the church year. One of the reasons we went back to the historic one-year lectionary from the three-year lectionary was so that in time you would know what to expect on a given Sunday and you would learn to care. Just like with the secular calendar, you will begin to make connections between the church year and your everyday life. In fact, last Sunday, I saw one of our former members, the Metz family, post a picture celebrating that it had been one year since their daughter was baptized on Gaudata Sunday. They even used the Latin name in their social media post. You see, these things get imprinted on our minds. I assure you, in time, the church year calendar will become a bigger part of your life, too, even if you aren't too interested yet. Now, the reason I point all this out is that this is now the third Advent season that we have been doing the historic lectionary. But despite my intentions to keep the readings consistent for your sake, I have changed the gospel reading every year on this fourth Sunday in Advent. As it happens once in a while, our hymnal offers two options for the gospel reading today. When Vicar Tweetmeyer was here, we heard the gospel lesson that we just did. When Vicar Meyer was here, we heard a gospel reading from Luke chapter 1, which was the story of pregnant Mary going to pregnant Elizabeth, announcing the news of the child she was carrying. This year, we went back to the more historic reading. Now, here's why I'm bringing all this up. As fellow disciples of Jesus, let me ask you, which reading is more Advent-like? You see, when we switched to the Mary and Elizabeth reading last year, it was because in my own ignorance, I was bothered by the fact that this reading from John 1 has really nothing to do with Christmas. And Christmas is less than a week away. This, by the way, is why I'm certain that our hymnal gave this alternate option, this Mary and Elizabeth account, because it comes right before the birth of Jesus in Luke chapter 1 and 2. Now the reason all this matters is because we are all so accustomed in our culture to celebrating a secularized form of Christmas way before Christmas actually gets here that we have no sense of why John 1 is actually a perfect setup for the actual birth of Jesus. Now, don't get me wrong. Having your decorations up and your tree up is great. In fact, I think nativity sets in people's yards are a wonderful confession of faith to their community. But here's the interesting fact about the fourth Sunday in Advent and the Gospel reading for today. It's the only one in the entire church year where the person of Jesus does not appear in it. Think about that. I mean, the reason we all stand for the gospel when it's read from the lectern is because it's the words and or the deeds of our Savior. We stand out of respect. Now, the pastor may be the one reading Jesus' words, but the pastor reads them in his place. The fact that this Sunday is the only Sunday without the words or the deeds of Jesus is a reminder that without Christmas, there would be no Jesus. There would be no salvation. There would be no eternal life. Not hearing Jesus' words or deeds today causes us to look forward to the celebration this Saturday even more when we will sing our beloved Christmas hymns like, O come all ye faithful, joy to the world. It's like during Lent when we omit our alleluias only to have them return on Easter morning. Like parents eagerly awaiting the birth of their child, 
So the absence of Jesus in the Gospel reading helps us eagerly await the celebration coming six days from now, or as my kids like to count it, six sleeps from now. Now while we don't have Jesus explicitly in the lectionary today, we do have John's words and his confession that he was not the Christ. We do have John's confession that there is among you standing one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. But that does not tell us who that one is. We are so close to celebrating the birth of Jesus and it's not quite yet here. Likewise, as the season of Advent teaches us, we are so close to celebrating the return of Jesus, but it's not quite yet here either. We have to wait a little while longer. So how do we do that faithfully? We wait just like John did. The Jews had sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? John the Evangelist recorded the action of John the Baptist, saying, He confessed, and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Now this confession teaches us a whole lot of things about what it means to confess things. Now so often, we think of a confession of faith only in positive terms of what we actually do believe. But with a true and clear confession of faith also comes a negative statement of what it is that we oppose or that we don't believe. So when you read your book of Concord at home during personal study, you will notice that our biblical articles of faith include not only what we believe, teach, and confess from Scripture alone, but also what we reject as false teaching. John confessed who he was by confessing who he was not. This is precisely what we do in Advent and how we wait for Jesus. We confess who we are by confessing that we are not the Christ. By doing so, we are confessing then that we need the Christ. We need Jesus. We are those who wait and hope for Christ to come. It is hard to wait for things and not get discouraged, especially since in this case Christians have been waiting for almost 2,000 years for Christ to come back. I'm sure most of our parents here have had their patience tested with kids asking, how many more sleeps till Christmas? Psalm 27, verse 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. In the meantime, while we wait for his final return, we come to his house to receive him in word and sacrament for the forgiveness of sins. Now regarding one of the sacraments, those who had been sent by the Pharisees asked John, Why are you baptizing? if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. John's point is simply that he is the forerunner of Christ. He is merely the voice of one crying out in the wilderness to make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. When John says, I baptize with water, He's indicating that he's just the one pouring out the water in baptism. Just like pastors today are just the ones who pour the water. In both cases, it is God who does the baptizing through the power of his word. John the Baptist and pastors today are simply the human vessels through whom God does his work. John's job was to point people to Christ. Same with pastors and same with you, according to your vocations. There are a lot of people who don't know Jesus, despite the fact that he stands among us today in word and sacrament. It is our Christian duty to live in a way, each according to our vocations, 
that points to Jesus' real presence in these means. The fourth Sunday in Advent is a strange Sunday. Even the epistle reading from Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Remember, rejoice was last week's theme. You would have think, you would have thought that the epistle this week would have been last week's epistle reading. It's not the theme we'd expect. But that's sort of how Christmas usually goes, isn't it? Always seems like something doesn't go to plan. We have this expecta- expectation that our Christmases will be perfect in the way we envision. Mary, though, certainly wasn't expecting to give birth in a stable. Those workers in Mayfield, Kentucky, certainly weren't expecting a tornado to destroy their livelihoods and for many of them their lives. The world is full of uncertainty, and the holiday itself doesn't deliver us from that. But Christ does. He gives us certainty. He delivers us. Here today stands among us one we do know. And he comes in his word and in his body and blood under the bread and wine. He gives us joy and hope and peace, not as the world gives, but only as he can give when we believe his word. He is the prophet like me from among you, whom Moses spoke of in the Old Testament reading. He is the one to whom we shall listen, for his words have eternal life. Several months ago, I made a visit to one of our beloved shut-ins. They were having a really bad day. By the way, I said our shut-ins. They're not my shut-ins. They're all of our shut-ins. They're our brothers and sisters. We need to care for them, too. There was an issue with filling a necessary prescription, and they were struggling to resolve it on the phone. But when I got there, I immediately sensed the tension. Now, perhaps in my younger days as a pastor, I would have just waved and said, I'll come back another time. As I said at the first service, it's good for him to hear these things. But instead, I just waited outside. You know, we don't have enough practice actually waiting patiently for things, do we? It's a good exercise, though. I mean, that's the point of today's sermon. We're waiting for Jesus to come back, right? Learning to do that with faithful and hopeful patience is the point of Advent. Anyways, about after 20, 25 minutes or so, I knocked on their door again, and I shut and opened the door and said, Sorry, Pastor, I'm waiting for the doctor to call back. But I think you're the doctor I need. They knew I was there to give them the medicine of immortality in the Eucharist. For in Jesus, we have everything we need for both body and soul. He does not stand among us as one we do not know. He has made himself known in his word. And he has revealed where to find him until he comes again. Hear. Listen to him. And receive him. Today, this Friday, this Saturday, next Sunday. For the forgiveness of sins. Strengthening you to life everlasting. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. He's coming soon. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Keep our hearts and our minds faithful in Christ our Lord. Amen.
At this time, I ask the Waits family to please come forward for a reception of, as new members. We have Chad and his wife, Natalie, and their daughter, Audrey, and son, Leo. Thank you for coming up. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Do you desire to become members of this congregation? Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? Upon this your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if the congregation would please join me as we pray with them and for them. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith, in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Please, after the service, uh, make the Waits family feel welcome and introduce yourselves. And thank you very much for coming up. And now we will continue with the prayer of the church. Yes. God of truth. As your servant John cried out in the wilderness, strengthen our pastors also to preach your word of truth in the wilderness of this fallen world. We give you thanks for the men you have raised up for this holy task. Bless them and their labors, and continue to send workers into your vineyard, that there may be a bountiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, preserve and prosper the schools of the church that our young people may be taught to delight and treasure the word of God above all riches. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you delight not in the death of the wicked. Grant to us and to all people freedom from war and disorder, strife and rebellion. Give us good government, faithful magistrates, and peace to aid the swift spread of your gospel. Renew our hearts with thanksgiving for your many blessings and grant us the wisdom to use them to fulfill your good purposes. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, teach us to make our requests known to you and to be anxious for nothing. Send your healing hand upon the sick and the suffering, especially Wayne, Joanne, Dean, Amy, Tracy, and Bill. Guard them with your peace in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Grant, Lord, that those preparing to receive the Holy Communion may rejoice in the presence of your Son, our true Emmanuel, who comes to give us a share in your divine life and forgiveness by his body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Lover of the human race, 
you sent your Son into the womb of the Virgin, that he might share our nature, forgive our sin, and destroy our death. Receive our thanks for those who have departed this life in faith and who now await the joyous day of his return. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant that it was as we recall with thanksgiving Christ's advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in glory at the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.